in this video, I'll be talking to you about creating variables and script files. So let's get started with variables. Now, previously, I did a basic calculation in my command window. 8 times 8 equals 64. I didn't assign this to a variable. By default, MATLAB assigned it to ANS. So this is the default variable. I actually could use that if I wanted to. So if I wanted to say add one more to that, I could use ANS. That's not a good coding practice. We want to make sure to create our own variable names and assign values to those variable names. So variable equals eight times eight. Now that value is assigned to an actual variable name that I've created and I can use, and I'm not worried about just getting it overwritten. Um, the variable name I chose, I said the word variable. I could have assigned my value to a character. Um, there's a lot of different variable names that you can choose. I recommend starting practicing with what type of variable names make sense to you. You want to give your variable names something meaningful. That way you can remember what your variables are. Um, and just so we can see those variables that we've created are now in this workspace over here and we can use them. So I could say y equals x times six. I'm actually using that variable that I have created x and I am going ahead to continue these calculations. So let's clear our command window. So CLC again, clear that command window. So I have something fresh to look at. I still have all my variables in my workspace so I can still be using them right now. Uh, so I've now used those variables to create another variable. As far as variable names, you do have a lot of options. You can pick any type of character. You can say any type of word. Um, if I create variable Z, capital Z is equal to lowercase c, you'll now see that I have two variables in my workspace, both lowercase and capital. So variable names are case sensitive. I cannot use variable names that start with a number that will give an error. And I'm going to say, no, don't do that. I cannot use spaces in my variable names. That also does not work. I have to have them all connected. Um, I can, if I prefer spaces, I can get used to the habit of using underscore. So underscore is an acceptable symbol for a variable name. I also can't use other symbols inside of my variable name. So see that also didn't work. Um, lots of different rules, but basically if you stick to characters, you're not going to get yourself into too much trouble unless you try using words that might already be an existing function. Um, so an example of this, pi is a function in MATLAB. Pi is equal to the value of pi. If I decide to use pi as a variable name, what do you think is going to happen? So let's say I'm doing some calculations and I need to know um, the diameter of my circle is four and I just want to go, okay, what's my circumference? So equals pi times diameter. It's now used that value of three that I assigned to pi. So the value of pi was changed. An easy way to fix that is I can just say clear pi. So now it's undone that variable I created. Now, if I try to use the same code, I'm hitting the up arrow, which will bring up previous code I wrote. It's a little shortcut that helps a lot. So now the value of pi is back to normal. So it's okay, it's an easy fix, but that is something I do wanna be careful about in creating variable names. So all those rules for variable names are the same rules for your script file names as well. So let's go ahead and create our first new script. New script. So when I have this new script file, this is where I'm actually going to be writing any code I want. It is a good habit to always start with CLC and clear. Clear is extremely important because I don't want my script file to be running on variables that already exist. So all of these variables here will be used in this script file if I do not clear. 
So it's a good habit to always write clear first. CLC is just to make the command window cleared out. It looks cleaner. So go ahead and write something in here. If I go to run my code, so I can just run it from here, it will save it first also. So. Now, if we look here in my current folder, you will now see that I have this script file I just created in my current folder. So we have our first script file. And let's say, for example, I want to say x, y is again x plus one, run it here. This is an example of using that variable I've created. Um, I've seen a lot of beginners try to do this. And I'm just going to show you what happens. So x is not yet defined here on line four. I defined it on line six, which is a problem because MATLAB doesn't recognize that variable. It reads top to bottom. So it's very important that I assign a variable before I use the variable. So again, here I'm assigning it. Now I'm using it after. So my code will work again. We'll get into more details about how to code in future videos, but hopefully this will give you a good start on creating those script files. Um, so again, I just did this from the home tab. I just hit new script. You can also do this from the editor tab. I can say new script here. So the plus sign is another place I can create a new script. And another way I can create a script file is using the function called edit. I can write the word edit and then I can say whatever I want to call my script file. And it will tell me this doesn't exist. Do you want to create it? Yes. So yes, I would like to create this new script file. That's why I approached it this way. It might see a little, seem a little bit more complicated, but there are some benefits to it. So remember how I said you don't accidentally want to change a function that exists. If I were to try to edit the function or script file pi, it's going to show me pi is actually something that already exists in MATLAB. So I don't want to change that. So then I would know, okay, that's not what I want to use for my script file name. Another one, I might think I want to create some script file called help. But it turns out there's something called help already in MATLAB. So I just want to show you that this can be a very helpful function. When you start getting into functions more, we'll talk about help more again. But if I use help, it'll tell me information about some type of code that exists in MATLAB. And I can always click the documentation link and it'll pull up even more information. So MATLAB has a lot of helpful features like this that can help you through as you're creating your own code.